Welcome to chapter two. In chapter two we're going to be covering kinematics and kinematics in this chapter is all about one-dimensional motion. Um, it's about moving around, it's about understanding relative movement. So if I were at a board talking to you I'd be moving back and forth and back and forth around the board. Kinematics is all about describing that motion back and forth. Where am I? When am I there? What is my total displacement? Now, my total displacement is distance between where I started and where I ended up. And I don't know about you, but most of the time when I give a talk in a class, at the end of the class, my total displacement is zero. Why? Because I walk back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and end up right back where I started. So anytime you end up right back where you start, your total displacement is zero. Now, the distance you've walked in the meantime may be different. The distance you've walked and your displacement are not the same thing. Um, the distance you walk back and forth, who knows how far I walk during an average lecture day. Um, but displacement is the distance between where you started to where you ended up. All right. We look at displacement in terms of a coordinate system and it matters. All right. In the next chapter we'll get into 2D displacement. In this chapter we're about one dimensional displacement, where the origin is, what direction you're headed. We generally think of east as positive, west as negative. And so when you talk about a movement, you're moving either in the positive direction or you're moving in the negative direction. You can have a positive displacement from west to east. You can have a negative displacement from east to west. And the direction of the displacement gives it a sign. All right? The sign tells you the direction of the displacement in a one-dimensional coordinate system. We'll talk about scalars, which are simply numbers, and we'll talk about vectors, which have to have direction. Right? You pair a scalar with a direction to get a vector. So if I tell you I walk five miles and then three miles and then two miles and um, say nothing else, you don't have any idea about how far I've gone. You need directions. I've walked five miles east three miles west, two miles west, I've gone a total displacement of zero. Or I've walked five miles east, three miles west, two miles east, now I've gone a total displacement of four, right, in the eastern direction. So a scalar is the number part, a vector, the vector is the direction part. For one dimensional it seems to be pretty easy, but for two dimensional it can get a little confusing at first and it's going to take you a while to kind of really get hold of or understand what we mean when we're talking about scalars and vectors. So as I said, vectors come with a direction, east, north, south, west. We'll actually also say x direction, the positive y direction, the negative x direction, the negative y direction. We have some um, we have some unit vector we use, tone chasing we use for this, so x hat, this little x, alright, this x with a little caret over the top, that's just what we call that symbol, caret, a little x with a hat on it like that is a unit vector in the plus x direction, alright. We don't have one for the unit vector in the minus x direction because all you really need to get a unit vector in the minus x direction is a minus sign, right? You don't need a separate symbol for it. Um, or y hat, all right? Y hat is a unit vector in the y direction and the positive y direction. Unit vectors are vectors with a length of one. That's why they're called unit vectors, right? Um, we, the reason we use them is because that makes our life easier. Because now I don't need a separate vector for um, for 30 miles east. All I just need is is to say the unit vector that's in the eastern direction and put 30 miles in that unit vector are 30 10 kilometers in that unit vector. Another thing we do simply because we use x and y so much, right? We use x and y so much. We're going to call the unit vector 
in the x direction i hat right i hat we're going to call the unit vector in the y direction j hat we're actually going to get to where we have a unit vector in the x in the k on um, z direction pardon me z direction that we call k hat and this is just because i j k lines up like x y well that's a very bad y x y z right so unit vectors help us in terms of dealing with the fact that we've got vectors and we've got scalars and we got to harmonize all of that in some sort of linguistic manner um, all right, so here are our three directions, I, J, and K.